This is the 2019-2020 Lightroom Classic Performance Guide. And in this video, Roxy and I have around nine tips to help you guys squeeze the most performance out of Lightroom. Let's get started. These first few tips are things that you should always be doing. So let's start with number one. Starting with Lightroom 8.4 and above, we have a new type of GPU-based acceleration for image processing. To enable this, I want you guys to press control comma on your keyboard or command comma if you're on a Mac. From the general tab, switch over to performance. Now where it says use graphics processor auto, I want you guys to switch this over to custom. For some reason, it turns this off by default. We want to switch on use GPU for image processing so that full graphic acceleration is now enabled. If you see basic acceleration, you're not quite there yet. Now, to get this, update to the latest version of Lightroom Classic. In addition, to make sure that your card is supported, you can click on the Learn More button to show you Adobe's list of supported graphics cards. Now, let's go to tip two. Whenever working with Lightroom, I want you guys to store your catalogs and work from your fastest internal drive. If you have an SSD drive, great. If you have an NVMe drive, even better. But you'll notice on my computer, if I switch over to the file system, I actually have this internal WIP. This stands for work in process. This is a two terabyte SSD where all of my actual Lightroom catalogs go, and this is where I work from. Tip number three, going back to Lightroom, choose the fastest internal drive, again, for that raw cache folder. And it can be the same place that you're storing your catalogs. That's no problem. From there, I would update the maximum size to 100 gigs, depending on what types of shoots that you do. So a lot of our catalogs get quite large, 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 images. So I wanna make sure that the raw cache folder has enough space to accommodate all of the different previews and, and cache files that it's gonna be saving there. So I said 200 gigabytes just to be safe. Okay, so those are things that you should always be doing. Now from here, if you notice that you still wanna squeeze more performance out of Lightroom, then continue to the next set of tips. So tip number four is to go down right into that develop spot right here and to select use smart previews instead of originals for image editing. What this is gonna do is from the develop module, well, it's gonna load smart previews here, which are much smaller, much quicker files to load, which will enable you to go quicker from image to image as you process files. If you notice that there's a slight decline in overall quality, it's because you're using smart previews, but keep in mind that when you export, the images are gonna be totally fine. If you also wanna see the image full resolution, you can click in to load the one-to-one -one preview and zoom back out, and it'll show a higher quality preview of that image. Tip number five, let's talk about file handling settings within your catalog settings. So I want you to press Alt, Control, Comma, or Option, Command, Comma if you're on a Mac, and go over to file handling. Now these are catalog specific settings, whereas the general preferences apply to all Lightroom catalogs. So these settings you would need to make with each new Lightroom catalog that you create. But if you notice that Lightroom is still going a bit sluggish, what you can do is actually reduce the standard preview size resolution. And I think it comes default depending on your display. Mine's a 4K display, so it defaults to 2880. And it also I think defaults around medium resolution. But you can change the actual quality as well as the preview size to accommodate. So if you say edit in 1080p, like a 1920 by 1080 resolution screen, you don't need a standard preview size of 2880 pixels. In fact, probably 1680 would be enough for you. In addition, you might not need high quality previews. You might downgrade to medium quality previews. Doing so is gonna again reduce the preview quality, but it's gonna speed up your overall Lightroom performance. And this can be very beneficial, especially for those that are working on laptops. Tip number six. You get bored, Roxy? Yeah, we'll speed this up. Go now to the metadata panel, and from this side, I want you guys to make sure that you've deselected automatically write changes into XMP. So when you have this option selected, what's gonna happen is, is Lightroom is gonna create an extra sidecar file every time you make an adjustment and change. So not only is it gonna write that adjustment into the catalog, but also into a sidecar file. If you notice your system going a little bit sluggish, it's because of each of these changes being written to two different places. So there are benefits to keeping XMPs. So one of those being if the catalog goes corrupt, you have a second set of file settings as a backup. 
but if your system is slowing down, then go ahead and deselect it. Tip number seven, turn off the automatic face detection. This uses quite a bit of CPU power as Lightroom uses AI to jump through all the images to try and detect faces. So simply turn it off. Tip number eight, separate your shoots by catalog. This is for those of you that are shooting, say, portrait sessions, engagement sessions, family, weddings, and your catalogs can get very large very quickly. What I would recommend is separating them. So despite whatever you read online, despite what Adobe says, Lightroom will slow down with catalog bloat. You're gonna see this around 20,000 images plus as Lightroom takes longer to load, it takes longer to back up, it takes longer to do everything inside of your Lightroom catalogs. So what we do is we actually separate every single shoot that we do based on the client. So we put a date and we put the name and what type of shoot that it was and we work with a separate catalog for each client and each shoot just to make sure that Lightroom is always running at peak efficiency. Tip number nine, when it comes to hardware, I want you to think CPU, hard drive, and GPU. These are the three primary things that are gonna speed up Lightroom performance from the hardware side. So if you're looking at a new computer, understand that when it comes to the CPU, a higher clock speed is going to give you better Lightroom performance than more cores. Lightroom isn't designed to utilize that many cores, so less cores and a higher clock speed is gonna make a bigger difference. Number two, fastest possible storage drive for the location of your catalogs. That means ideally set up with an internal SSD or an MVME drive, which is even better, for fast read and write times, which is gonna enable Lightroom to be able to quickly access those files and write cache and preview information. Finally, the GPU, make sure that you select a GPU that offers full acceleration when image processing. If you're a hardware person and you love to tinker, by all means, build your machine with these specs and you can save quite a bit of money in doing so. If you want a pre-built machine that's just ready to go, well, for those that prefer Mac OS, obviously Apple is a fantastic option on that side. And for those that prefer Windows and PC and kind of the upgradability of PCs, we would recommend going with Puget Systems. Guys, if you like the information in this video, I'd highly recommend checking out our Lightroom Fundamentals course. It is an A to Z guide that's gonna get you to raw processing mastery and despite its name being Fundamentals, this is stuff that most people don't realize Lightroom can do. There's so much untapped potential in this software and we're gonna show you inside of that course. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and if you did, post a comment below Give the video a like and a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more. My name is Pi and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hopefully with Roxy. You gonna come to the next one? No. She got bored.